What is up, YouTube? I just had some lunch, finished a workout, top chat, live chat. Welcome <clears throat> to the live stream. Stop it, Bear. So we have Baby Bear here who's trying to help me out. And I'm really excited to spend some time with you guys today on a live stream. While you guys are joining, just give me one moment. Give me one moment. All right, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> so we just had to let the puppy out. For those of you guys who don't know me, it is Christine Heronic, food scientist, chemical engineer, owner and founder of Gage Girl Training, an online meal planning and coaching service. And happy Monday, it is April 24th, and I'm so excited to be here. So for those of you guys joining, we're gonna do a heart-to-heart -heart chat today about how to stop self-sabotaging your fat loss journey. Part of the hair is a little frizzy, just came from the gym. I just had my meal, hello from Sacramento. Um, so what I wanna talk to you guys about is self-sabotage. Have you ever been consciously working on your health goals? You want to lose weight, you want to be more consistent, you want to be the person that exercises more, you want to feel good, you want you want it, you genuinely know it's good for you, you wanna do it, but for some reason, you just keep making the wrong choices and you're in a pattern where you're doing it over and over and over and over again and you feel like you can't snap out of it. Um, you've been self-sabotaging yourself all week. I appreciate that honesty, guys. I have been there, I understand you, and I wanna to talk to you guys about some strategies and tactics that actually work. So if you are just joining the live stream, welcome. It is Christine Heronic, owner of Gage Girl Training. We're, today we're talking about how to stop self-sabotage. So if you're enjoying this live stream, please give it a thumbs up. Please make sure that you are following and subscribe to the channel and that you hit the bell for notifications. So. When you are in a cycle of self-sabotage, you're, you're probably in a cycle of putting yourself last. You're probably in a cycle of not caring. You're probably in a cycle where you're, you, you, give up, you gave up. You literally have given up. And sometimes you feel like you have no fight left in you. Maybe you are, when, I feel like when you're exhausted mentally, when you're exhausted mentally, when your soul is tired, there is no amount of sleep that is going to cure that type of exhaustion. Who here has felt exhausted? You've felt drained. And I say drained, I mean mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and it's just substantially harder for you to do basic things. You used to be that person that was disciplined with the gym. You used to be that person who cared about your meals. You used to be that person who wanted to drink water all the time. You used to be that person for some reason, you can't find your groove. If this is you, you are not alone. This happens, this happens to a lot of people and with the state of the world these last few years, from the pandemic onwards, guys, we live in a new world, things are different, there is a lot of stress on people and people aren't taking the opportunity to process and take care of themselves in the right way. So what I want you guys to remember is this, if you are self-sabotaging, you have to remember this, this truth, is that you have to get out of the expectation headspace, meaning X pounds, hey Susan, you need to get out of the results mindset. And you guys know I am a food scientist, I'm a chemical engineer, my business, I will get you results, but you need to eliminate the results factor for a second and you need to be like, okay, what's important? And I think the number one thing that's important is to restore your energy, to restore your energy, get yourself back to a place where you have energy again. And this is where I suggest you guys, if you are self-sabotaging, if you are 
participating in behavior that is not aligned with your best interest. If the number one thing, you guys, you're gonna have to cut out alcohol. I'm gonna put it straight out there. If anybody here is using alcohol as a crutch, or if it's just something that you partake in more often than you know you should, alcohol, it's gotta be the number one thing to go, and here's why. Alcohol, not only does it pause your ability to metabolize fat for 48 to 72 hours, not only does it provide zero nutritive value, not only does it provide extra calories and drives your hunger cravings up, dehydrates you, it's a depressant. Alcohol is a depressant. It will bring you down ultimately. Whatever temporary head change it does provide you in the short term, it's ultimately going to turn and it is a depressant. So Alcohol is the number one self-sabotaging activity that you're going to have to part with. Now, does this mean you never have a drink again? No, but it would do you a lot of good if you're like, you know what? And I, I don't know how frequently you guys drink or how much a part this is of your routine. It varies person to person. But if it's something that you do more than you know you should, challenge yourself. You'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to drink for the next week or for the next month. And if the idea of not drinking alcohol for a month seems exceedingly hard for you, that's a warning sign that you may be using it as a crutch and it may be something that you do need to chill out from. That's number one. Number two, if you are self-sabotaging, I want you to be mindful of your thoughts. Now, I talk about discipline a lot. I talk about discipline with your schedule, with your routine, with your eating, with your habits, right? But do you guys understand that you have to be disciplined with your thoughts? Meaning, who here allows themselves to entertain negative thoughts? Who allows themselves to entertain negative thoughts? And you have to remember, my friends, that you have to choose your thoughts. Sorry, my hair is just like, Frizz-tacular. You have to be disciplined with your thoughts, meaning we all have moments, but if you allow yourself to go down the rabbit hole of the, the headspace that says, you know what, it's never gonna get better. It's always gonna be like this. Why do you look so fat? Why can't you get it together? or I look disgusting, or why does nothing fit me? Or you know what, it's just my age, I'm never gonna get back there again, you know what? Like, you have to make a choice and say, you know what, actually, no, that's not true. Actually, I can make improvements. Actually, I can improve my choices. Actually, even though I have a hormone imbalance, even though I'm on certain medications, even though I have these health challenges, you know what? I can find a way. I can apply myself. I can assert myself. If you're like, oh, it's just my genetics, this shit runs in my family. It's just not, I'm not that, I'm not gonna be a 21 year old, da 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 da. You don't have to be. I need you all to realize that you can be the best version of you. And that sounds so simple and so basic, but it's something that encourages me so much because I used to find myself comparing myself to other influencers online, to other, just other people, just people in general. And it would make me feel like shit. I would make me feel like, well, I need to have a rounder butt or I need bigger boobs or I need a certain waist to hip ratio. Da, 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 da. You'll make yourself miserable if you go down the rabbit hole of comparing yourself to others. Instead, if you're like, you know what? I'm going to make my legs and my ass and my body the best that it could be for me. And do you know what's so crazy, you guys? That sounds so simple and so basic, but that, it like made me smile on the inside. I was just like, wow, I don't have to be anybody but my best self. And you see, like I'm low-key smiling because it's encouraging, it's liberating, it's freeing, and who here is just trying to do the round peg square hole thing. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're trying to stuff a round peg in a square hole or vice versa, my friends, you're gonna be miserable. Hello, hello, everybody. And today we're talking about how to stop self-sabotaging. 
Let go of unrealistic expectations. Let go of this per perception in your brain that you need to be something else, somebody else, that you need to look a certain way to have value, that you need to look a certain way to have worth, that you need to look a certain way to be loved, and that you need to look a certain way to be worthy of your own love. Guess what, my friends? You are worthy of your own love today. You don't need to lose 10 pounds, five pounds, 100 pounds. You don't need to lose anything. You're deserving of your own love today. And doesn't that just feel good to hear? Doesn't that just feel so good to hear? How many of you guys are depriving yourself from your own love? How many of you are depriving yourself from your own mercy, from your own grace, from... How many of you are depriving yourself? How, how good would it be to just be kind to yourself, to be like, you know what? I want to start making changes because if you set the foundation for your fat loss, I, I talk to a friend of mine about this all the time, right? Where who here has ever looked back at a photo of yourself where you were so thin, right? You were thinner. But let's say that during that season of your life when you were super thin, ask yourself, was that the healthiest version of your life? Meaning, I remember recently looking at a photo of myself. I was teeny tiny, teeny tiny. And I was like, damn, during that season of my life, I was stressed, I was overwhelmed, I was going through shit, I wasn't eating, like, I, I looked at that and I was just like, do I really envy an aesthetic when on the inside I was a hot mess? Does that make sense, my friends? And the, the thing I want you guys to realize is that you have to move forward from the heart and the headspace that says, you know what? It, it, it feels good to feel good. You know what? My stress is lower when I exercise. You know what? I... I I have less cravings. I feel nourished and satisfied when I eat well. Like, and I'm not, I'm not talking about starving yourself, guys. I'm talking about getting nutrients. I'm talking about hydrating yourself. I'm talking about rest. Like, and Andrea, if, you're, if you've been filling everybody else's cup while yours is empty, guess what? It's a recipe for disaster. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And I think that so many of you guys are burnt the fuck out. Pardon my French, there's just no better way to say it. You're burnt out. You, your, your shit is dried up. And it's, it's like, it's not even an if or a maybe. It's your body is in desperate need of being watered. It, you need to be watered. You need to be cared for. Like picture like a garden or a plant or like landscaping on a property that's just dry and there's weeds everywhere and it's like there's no it's like it hasn't rained like it's like the lawn hasn't been mowed like it hasn't been tended to it hasn't been cared for and the question I ask you guys right now is are you tending to yourself are you tending to yourself are you getting quality rest like I was talking to one of my girlfriends the other day she was really stressed out she's going through a breakup and it's gonna sound so simple I said to her, I said, girl, I said, you know what you need to do? I said, you have to boost your self-care. I told her, I said, girl, take a long shower. I said, shave, exfoliate, put on some like nice smelling perfume afterwards, put on lotion, put on like some nice like pajamas, like make sure your bed sheets are clean. She goes, girl, I don't remember the last time I put on lotion. She's like, I said, she goes, I don't remember the last time I put on lotion. She's like, I don't remember the last time I put on perfume. And those basic kindnesses towards yourself, guys, they add up in a way that, that puts you in a headspace to take care of yourself for the right reasons. Because I've had so many clients, I've known so many people who look at nutrition, who look at, look at it from the perspective of a short-term project where it's like, you know what, I'm going to suck it up. And I'm just going to do what I need to do. And then after that, I'm going to go back to my bullshit. Do you guys understand that that's not healthy? Like, um, 
I appreciate Andrea what she said. She says, um, up 30 pounds, I can't lose anything, tired, depressed, fibromyalgia, pre-diabetic. I put myself first this last week and I feel like a million bucks. And girl, thank you for sharing that with us. First of all, congratulations on making that shift in putting yourself first. Guys, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. It's not selfish to exercise. It's not selfish to weigh out your foods and portion your meals. It's not selfish. And I don't know who needs to hear this, my friends, but nobody is going to do this for you. No one's going to do this for you. Only you can do this. And I'm telling you guys, discipline is the highest form of self-love. It is the highest form of self-love. So if you catch yourself going down this rabbit hole, oh, there's not enough time. Oh, I don't have enough energy. Oh, I don't got time for all that. And then you start going into a state of overwhelm. Guess what? There is enough time. Everything you're saying is an excuse. And I say that with the utmost love because I know what it's like to be there. I can be the excuse queen when I don't feel like doing something. I'll say I'm busy. I'll say I'm this, this, this. But the reality is I'm overwhelmed in my heart. I'm overwhelmed in my mind. And the idea of taking something else on that you already feel like you're going to fail at it's like, why bother? Who's in that headspace where you're like, why effing bother? Like, you know you can do it. You know you got it. You know what to do, but you're overwhelmed. Like, you're like in this deer in headlights. You're in this like mental, emotional paralysis where you know you need to make changes. You know that you're long overdue to make changes, but you're just stuck and you're in this deer in headlights mode and all you want to do is the stuff that's familiar, the stuff that's comfortable. You want to just stay doing what you're doing. And guess what, guys? It's a re it's a recipe for failure. It's a recipe for failure because the pain of staying the same is substantially greater than the pain of fighting forward. I'm going to repeat that. The pain of staying the same is substantially greater than the pain of fighting through your shit. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but it, it might get messy. It might be a battle. You guys, I've had days where I did not freaking feel like going to the gym. I got my ass to the gym anyway. And I remember it was a leg day. It was last fall. I was having a shit day. I did not want to be there, but I got there. And I remember I was on the leg press machine and I was freaking crying. I was crying. There's like tears streaming down my face. Not like a I wasn't like the, not the hyperventilating cry, but I had tears streaming down my face and I had to fight through some shit to get there. And you know what, guys, if it gets messy, if it is hard, if you do have slip ups along the way, so what? You have to fight forward. It is better to try and slip up and have some fumbles than to just be like, you know what? Why bother? You got to find your fight again. You got to find that, that, that part of you inside that fights and forces yourself and pushes yourself. Because I was talking to a client, was it Thursday? Thursday. And she was telling me about how she'll fight for her children, right? She has a, a child with special needs and she will fight city hall for her kid. I mean, health companies, insurance companies, specialists, teachers, the whole nine. When it comes to herself, it's like, where's your fight at, girl? Where's your fight at? And I know that you guys are fighters. I know that you guys are stronger than you're giving yourself credit for. You have to tap back into that part of you that fights. You have to tap back into that piece of you that says, you know what? Even if this looks ugly, even if this is messy, even if it's not perfect, you know what? I'm going to try anyway. And that's going to be enough. And I want I don't want you guys to focus on perfection. I want you guys to focus on effort. I want you guys to focus on showing up. I have a client right now who has a very busy job, has a lot going on, family, kids, the whole nine yards. And we, we're improving her nutrition, which is great, but I cannot get her to work out because she's telling me, Christine, I got no time. I got no time. I got this. I got this. I got this. And I said, girl, four exercises. I said, give me four exercises. And she's like, well, what do you mean? I said, 
I want you to do a strength routine. I said, in my book, I told her, in my book, and you guys you may know my book, Unlock Your Macro Type. In chapter nine, I talk about the fitness piece, right? Exercising for your macro type. And in chapter nine of this book, and I know a lot of you guys have my book, I talk about my exercise strategy, my push-pull legs exercise strategy. And on page 281, 282, and 283, there is a list of exercises to do for push. There's a list of exercises to do for pull. There's a list of exercises to do for legs. I said, girl, go to my book. Go to the push-pull legs. When it's your push day, I said, pick four exercises. Pick four. Four. She's got all the, sh the weights and stuff at home. I said, just do four. I said, I'm not asking you to do a 90-minute weight training session. Oh, that's awesome, Andrea. I, I, I'm really glad. And for those of you who don't have my book, Unlock Your Macrotype, it's on Amazon. This is a steal. Guys, this book, will, is, it's, it, it's a self-discovery tool to help you figure out the best way to align your nutrition, to align your training, it teaches you how to do your, it teaches you everything you need to know, right? And I told her, I said, girl, I said, just do four exercises from each group. I said, you can do four exercises. I said, because the thing is, She's getting overwhelmed. And the idea of doing a full blown workout is, it's, it, it's too much for her right now. So I said, give me four. And who of you guys watching right now, who's not following a workout routine right now? Be honest with me. Say me, if you are not following an actual workout regimen right now. Dude, this is a no judgment zone. I'm saying this to help you. I'm saying this to bring structure to your life. I'm saying this because if you're self-sabotaging, you probably are not following a program. You're probably just getting defeated far too soon. And guys, if, if you miss a workout, if you screw up, pick it up and get back on it. I use this mantra with my clients and i'm gonna say it again here if you're an og an old time follower you know what i want to say what do i say i say reset early reset often reset early reset often what does that mean reset early reset often means you reset as soon as your next meal if you went over on something dude let it go let it go and reset as soon as your next meal because guess what how many of you guys or like, oh, I'll start back up again Monday, or oh, I'll start up next month, or oh, da, 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 da. I mean, it's so easy to think that a minor kink in the armor, a minor inconvenience is reason enough to give up. It's not. It's not. Stop quitting too soon. Stop quitting so soon, you guys. Reset early. Reset often. And for those of you guys watching this right now, I'm so glad you're here. I do ask you to please give this video a thumbs up and I'm going to invite you guys to join my Summer Ready Challenge with me. So my Summer Ready Challenge starts on May 15th. That gives you guys about two and a half, three weeks. It's a six week challenge. On this challenge, you're gonna get customized macros that change every two weeks. You're gonna get workouts for home or gym. You're gonna get a weekly Zoom call with me. You're gonna get community support. And you're going to get the opportunity to commit yourself to something because this all sounds great, but until you make a choice and you make a decision that says, you know what, it is time to change. You know what, it is time to commit myself. It is time to feel good again. It is time to feel like me again. And you have to remember, yours was, it was only one bag of Easter eggs. If I finish it today, I won't have anything to eat tomorrow. And, and we all have those things, my friends. We all have those things. But what I want to encourage you guys is that if you haven't felt like yourself in a long time, and I mean, if you've lost your sparkle, if you feel dull, if you just feel like, you feel like your best days are behind you, I'm here to tell you that that's not true. And that what you wanna focus on is this. You want to focus on being the best you that you can be. You want, definitely want to eliminate alcohol. Just please get rid of it for, for, the, for the time being. You want to make choices that are aligned with your best interest. You want to start from a place of self-love. You want to nourish yourself and be disciplined in your thoughts. 
You want to step forward because you love yourself, not because you hate yourself. You want to focus on being the best version of you that you can be at this chapter of your life. Don't compare yourself to the past. Compare yourself to now and just be like, you know what? Am I doing better than I was yesterday? Am I doing better than I was yesterday? Am I doing better than I was yesterday? Um, <clears throat> there's something really exciting about that because if you're focusing on like perfect, 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 then it's like, guys, did you move more today than you moved yesterday? Did you make better choices today with your food than you did yesterday? That's great. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, Christine, I do self-sabotage. I'm with you. Tell me what to do. If you're in that place where you're like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of being drained. I'm tired and tired and tired and I want to feel better. I don't want to feel like this anymore. Then I invite you, go to gagegirltraining.com. Sign up for the Summer Ready Challenge. We have discounted pricing, you guys. It is a steal to join. And if you have questions about the journey, about the process, you can email us at info at gagegirltraining.com. You can shoot me a DM, a private message over at Gage Girl Training on Instagram. But guys, end the era of self-sabotage by taking a step forward out of self-love. I am all for a body positive self-image. <clears throat> And Andrea, I think that, you know what? You can't compare yourself to a different era. I think that, you know what? You're in your 40s now. Take it one day at a time. Do the best you can. And what you want to do, my friends, is this. Establish your new normal. Establish your new normal. What does that look like? What does that look like? And I'll tell you what, my friends. Fill it with good choices. Fill it with plenty of water. Fill it with quality sleep. Fill it with walks in nature. Fill it with trips to the gym. Fill it with trips and just filling your, your fridge with nourishing foods. It's not the same, my friends. It's not the same as your 30s. I'm, I'm 41. I get it. I get it. It's not the same. And that's okay. And that's okay. It's perfectly okay. And... It's empowering, exciting, and exhilarating to say, you know what, I'm going to focus on being the best me that I can be at this era in my life. So I hope this encouraged you guys today. Thank you so much for being here. Again, gagegirltraining.com to sign up for the Summer Ready Challenge. I really hope that you guys all seriously consider my call to action to join because I say this. Why do I say this to you guys? Do I say this? as an exercise in futility. No, I say this because guess what? You will actually feel better if you stop the self-sabotage, right? I usually can get up at four. It can be even better than our 20s and 30s. And guys, it's not going to be perfect. Sometimes it's gonna be feeling messy, but don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. Actually, there is so much more that you can do. There is so much more that you can do. And I want you guys to find your fight for yourself again. Find your fight for yourself again and stop depriving yourself of that self-love that you need. Stop depriving yourself. Obviously, I'm here to help you with all the science and the if and all the logistics around it, but it has to start with a will and a desire that says, you know what? Enough is enough of this. I want to feel better. I want to feel better. I'm tired. I'm tired of my BS. I'm tired of my cycles. I'm tired because I get exhausted seeing you guys exhaust yourselves. Choose a healthy lifestyle for life. Every day is a day to be better. Amen. Amen. Guys, have an amazing rest of your day. Enroll on GageGirlTraining.com. Again, questions, concerns, anything, let me know. But have a great day. And please like this video before you leave.